motive when I go to my closet to pray? What is your motive when you go to your closet to pray? Is it a selfish motive? Selfish motives are like weeds, weeds that grow in a clean, in a, in a clean garden that has been planted. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who reigns forever and ever, our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, we welcome you to our program, Voice of God, ACK Diocese of Marcelonov. You've been a blessing to us and we pray that you continue being a blessing to us as we encourage that you subscribe uh, to our channel. YouTube channel SK Dazu Marcelo and continue following us as we continue ministering to you. My name is Moses Amwai and I thank the Lord so much for you. Last time we shared on the benefits of praying in the Spirit, the benefits of praying in the Spirit. And today I'd like us to share on the hindrances, hindrances to praying in the Spirit. And we shall be looking at the solutions to these hindrances. What are these things that hinder us from praying in the spirit? And how can we overcome them? How can we overcome them so that we pray in the spirit? Because it is the will of God that you and I as his children pray in the spirit. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Surely... The arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. But then we have found ourselves in a situation where our prayers are like hitting the ceiling and they bounce back where we are praying and no one seems to be listening. And you see, it is not because that God has lost his power. It is not because God has gone blind. It is not because God has gone deaf. But it is because of our iniquities. And so that is the first hindrance to us praying in the spirit and confessed sins, and confessed sins. In Psalm 66, verse 18, Psalm 66 verse 18, the psalmist says, Psalm 66 18, If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If we continue making, you know, the mistake of holding so much on to sin, delighting in sin, the Lord will not listen to us. This will be a hindrance to praying in the spirit. This will be a hindrance to praying in the spirit. And so sin ends up separating us from God. Sin ends up causing God to hide his face from us. And so what can we do to overcome this hindrance of unconfessed sin? The solution to this is, one, we need to submit ourselves to thorough spiritual examination. I need to always pray the prayer that is in Psalm 139, 23 and 24. This is what this prayer says. That search me God and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me to the path everlasting. Lead me to the way everlasting. We need to surrender ourselves so that the Lord searches us through and through to take away that which does not bring glory to God. It's like the way you go to a medic, a doctor or whoever it is and you are unwell. You have to explain yourself fully to him. You have to explain yourself fully to them for you to be diagnosed rightly and for you to get the right medication so that you are well. And so for us to overcome this hindrance of unconfessed sin, we have to surrender ourselves to the Lord for thorough spiritual examination. 
so that he takes away that which does not bring glory to him and our prayers will be heard. The second thing we need to do is we need to repent genuinely. Repentance means, you know, making a turnaround, an about turn, that you are going this direction, but you completely turn and start going the, uh, the, the other direction, in the, uh, start going the right direction. Repenting and confessing our sins. When our sins, when we have unconfessed sin in our lives, when we have unrepented sin in our lives, when we have unforgiven sins in our lives, we shall not be heard. We shall not pray effectively. And so we must deal with sin before we expect God to listen to our prayers. And this means prayers of confession and seeking God's forgiveness should always be regular, should always be a regular part of our prayers. And our Lord Jesus Christ taught us that in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And so we have always to seek to be forgiven if we have to pray effectively. So that's the first hindrance to praying in the Spirit. That is unconfessed sin. And the solution to this, we are saying is, let us, one, surrender ourselves to the Lord for thorough spiritual examination so that anything, any sin is removed from us. And two, we have to repent and ask for forgiveness from the Lord. The second hindrance to pray in the Spirit is bitterness against each other. Bitterness against each other. Brethren, we are living during times when people have a lot of bitterness against one another. The husband has bitterness against the wife. The children have bitter bitterness against, against their parents. Everybody, the neighbor has bitter bitterness against their neighbor. The colleagues have bitterness against one another, their place of work. You know, the Christians have bitterness against their leaders, their clergy. Uh, the, 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 the clergy have bitterness against their, the flock they are taking care of. Bitterness all over. And this is a serious hindrance to our prayers. In Mark chapter 11, verse 25, this is what our Lord Jesus Christ tells us. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That is how our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. And so to experience God's forgiveness and therefore to experience His closeness and fellowship in prayer, we need to let go of our bitterness and forgive those who have offended us. In our series last week, Reverend Laban was imploring to us. He was calling on us to forgive them that have wronged us. I want to echo the same. Forgive them that have wronged you. The bitterness in your heart is causing your prayers not to be heard. The bitterness that you are harboring inside your heart is causing you not to pray in the spirit, not to be heard with the Lord. Bitterness and grudges among Christians is one of the most effective strategies that the devil is using, you know, to cause hindrance in our, in our prayers so that we don't pray effectively. And so the solution to this is forgive. And not just forgive, forgive quickly. Don't continue holding those grudges. Don't continue holding those, uh, th that bitterness in your heart. To forgive others as we have been forgiven. If you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. If you don't forgive, your prayers will not be heard. If you don't forgive, you will not be able to pray in the Spirit. And the third hindrance to praying in the Spirit is selfish motives. You know, selfish motives. Sometimes we pray with selfish motives. Apostle James says in James chapter 4, verse 1 and 3, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't, you, don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have. So you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You uh, do not have because you do not ask. And when you ask, you do not receive. Because you ask 
with the wrong motives. That you may spend what you get on your pleasures. That is what Apostle James tells us. That we don't get because we do not ask. But when we ask, we are asking with wrong motives, selfish motives, so that we get that which, that which will satisfy our selfish desires, our selfish ambitions. And so may the Lord help us because this is a hindrance to us praying in the Spirit. It is a warning that is coming from the Lord to us that most of the times we simply lay down a prayer items, lay down prayer agenda that is for our own good, that is for our own selfish benefits. But this is not the will of God for us. If we are to pray to get things from God for our own selfish purposes, we cannot expect to have a fruitful prayer life or to receive what we are asking from God because we are asking with wrong motives. And so what do we do to solve this? What will be, uh, what is the solution to this, uh, to this uh, hindrance? The solution is, it is important that you and I regularly assess our motives in praying. What is my motive when I go to my closet to pray? What is your motive when you go to your closet to pray? Is it a selfish motive? Selfish motives are like weeds, weeds that grow in a, clean, in, a, in a clean garden that has been planted. Those weeds will always choke the crops, the good seed that has been planted in this, uh, in this clean garden. And so we have to ask God to reveal these motives to us so that we can root them out of our hearts. And in the end, we pray in the Spirit. It is the will of God that we pray in the Spirit. Do you have unconfessed sin in your heart? Then the Lord is calling unto you today to confess that sin. And in the end, you will pray in the Spirit and your heart and your prayers will be answered. The Lord is calling unto you to surrender yourself to Him so that He examines you thoroughly to remove that which does not bring glory to you. Do you have bitterness in your heart? Yes, if you have that bitterness, then it causes you not to pray in the Spirit. And the solution to this is forgive. Forgive and forgive quickly. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. If you do not forgive, you will not be able to pray in the Spirit and your prayers will not be heard. Your prayers will not be answered. Are you praying with selfish motives? Is your heart filled with selfish motives and ambitions? The solution to this is allow the Spirit of the Lord to search you and to assess you again and again so that by the help of this Holy Spirit of God, those selfish motives will be rooted out and you'll be able to pray in the Spirit and the Lord will hear you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of our Lord Jesus, this day we surrender ourselves to you. We are human, we are helpless. On our own we cannot. Every other day because of our disobedient nature, we fall into sin. And this sin, when unconfessed, causes a hindrance in our prayer lives that we cannot pray spiritually. We cannot pray in the Spirit. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister that you are helping them this day to be able to confess their sins, to be able to repent their sins, that you may forgive us so that you may hear us. Most of the times, Lord, we have a bitterness in our hearts and this causes us not to be heard by you. We pray that, Lord, may you forgive us and may you give us the grace to forgive them that have wronged us. Lord, because of our human nature, we pray out of selfish ambitions. And we pray that this day may you help us to search ourselves deeply, to assess ourselves deeply, so that at the end of the day, we root out these selfish ambitions. And by so doing, you will hear us and you will answer us. Bless us and give us the grace to pray in the Spirit 
to pray without ceasing. We thank you today. We thank you forever. In Jesus' name we pray.